So welcome, welcome to another session of Everyday Mathematics. Here at Everyday Mathematics, as we always say, we do enjoy solving the harder problems, but above all, we also do see and appreciate the beauty in the simpler problems. Um, today, uh, we are stepping back from the MIT 2024 Integration B Finals, and now we are going to tackle the MIT 2024 Integration B Semifinals, or Semifinals B. And our problem of focus is problem one in that semifinals. So um, the problem is, uh, it looks quite easy, but uh, it does have uh, a propensity or potential to really trip a lot of people. Um, so we're gonna try to show you where uh, things get a little bit murky and dicier. So, um, well, before I jump on to uh, the solution, I'd like to thank our subscribers. Thank you so much for your support. Your support uh, is uh, amazing and uh, we don't take it for granted. Uh, for our first time visitors here at Everyday Mathematics, what we do is we just go about and around and look at uh, intricate mathematical problems and we come back and share with you the solutions to these problems. Uh, to our repeating visitors who haven't subscribed, we just do uh, request you to consider or reconsider subscribing to our channel. Uh, if you also like our video and uh, you um, like to see more of the content, please uh, tap on the like button. Um, that really helps in you know our getting our recommendations across uh, several other people. Um, so. Uh, the problem of focus is the integration, a definite integration from negative infinity to positive infinity of x cubed minus 4x times sine x plus and bracket 3x squared minus 4 times cos x over uh, x cubed minus 4x squared plus cosine squared x. So um, interesting problem. Um, and this is how I would personally attack it. Um, so first, I would uh, divide both the numerator and the denominator uh, by cosine squared x. And um, what that essentially leads to is a 1 plus something squared. And uh, when I see a 1 plus something squared in the denominator, uh, the obvious thing that I personally um, am inclined to do is substitute that value that is squared in the denominator to with uh, uh, a u and then eventually tangent. Uh, but today uh, we'll take a shorter route because we know for sure that uh, the integration of one over x squared plus one is a tangent of x. So we're going to move towards that direction. So as you can see, after dividing by x uh, cosine squared x, now we have uh, x cubed minus 4x uh, times tangent x, uh, second x plus 3x squared minus 4 uh, times second squared x. Um, and as you can see, um, this value in the denominator um, that we obviously divide whatever we've said, uh, is x cubed minus 4x second x. Mm -hmm. um, squared plus x. And whatever the numerator is a derivative of this value. So what we're going to do just uh, creatively, we're just going to say, well, let's ignore the limits for now. And we say, hey, let u be equal to x cubed minus 4x second x. And so du dx is equals to x cubed minus 4x tangent x second x plus 3x squared minus 4 second x. And so essentially what this is telling us, if you have substituted with U, uh, DU uh, can be used to replace uh, X cubed minus four X tangent X second X plus uh, three X squared minus four uh, second X DX. And then, um, so essentially our uh, integration, the indefinite integration where we've ignored the limits for now is, um, equal to in place of the entire numerator and times this dx is du. And then in place of this component in the uh, denominator, we have u and so u squared. And as we know, uh, we don't want to really go further into explaining how this now comes to uh, arctangent of u plus c. 
Um, but that's that's the uh, integration in the U domain. But since we know that U is equals to X Q minus four X second X, we can say now that our indefinite integral ignoring the limits is um, equal to the arctangent of, in bracket, X cubed minus four uh, X close bracket uh, times second X, obviously plus the integration constant. So that now when we bring in the limits, um, our integration now becomes um, uh, as follows. Because now um, we have a arctangent x cubed minus 4x times second x times second x now from negative infinity to positive infinity. There are a lot of discontinuities in this function here, and that's what we have to be really cognizant about. And as I began showing you is that uh, the function arctangent of x, as it it's shown here, it quickly tends to pi over two as x decreases towards negative infinity and as it moves from zero to positive infinity. So um, quickly things go towards arctangent, I mean, uh, towards pi over two and negative pi over two uh, in the negative direction, positive pi over two in the pos when x goes in the positive direction. So um, we now know that, and then uh, we have x cubed minus 4x second x. How does this function behave? As we can see, uh, for x cubed minus 4x, it rapidly tends to negative infinity. Um, and then also as you move away, so it crosses x at x equals to 2, negative 2, and 0, and x equals to positive 2 and rapidly goes to positive infinity as the x goes to the positive direction. Then second x is just this up and down flip-flopping of uh, this u-shaped curve. So when we multiply these two curves together, um, this is what we get. So uh, this flip-flopping rapidly goes to infinity, and then uh, the crossing of zero happens at x equals to two, x equals to zero, x is equals to positive two. Now at this, uh, in the negative direction, uh, what this arctangent of this function is going to be is it's going to tend to negative uh, pi over two. When the u is flipping the positive direction is going to tend to pi over two. And so you're going to have constant pi over two positive negative pi over two. So we're going to have that step up, negative, positive, negative, positive. And then from here now is where we're going to have a transition uh, from uh, positive, um, so here first of all. So um, we're gonna have a, a very interesting transition here um, as it goes towards zero. Um, and so this is what essentially happens. So as you can see, uh, from that positive infinity, uh, we are seeing it go down from pi over two, positive to negative pi over two. And then that process repeats, the zero crossing is maintained whenever um, the x cubed minus four x second x was zero, that tangent of zero is going to be zero. Uh, and then the rest, we see the stepping away like negative pi over two, positive pi over two. And so uh, what we are having here now, we're going to divide this into several domains. We're going to have the domain negative pi, uh, infinity to negative three pi over two. Then we're going to have negative three pi over two to negative pi over two. And then, um, we're going to have the domain negative pi over two to pi over two, and then from uh, pi over two to uh, three pi over two, and then from three pi over two to infinity, right? So this is essentially what is happening. This is our negative three pi over two. 
Um, so this is where the stepping stops and now we're having this smooth uh, curve. Um, and that happens all the way up to negative pi over two. So here, since this is constant, this entire interval, uh, there are obviously some sub intervals here, but the integral here is zero. The integral here is, is obviously going to be zero. Um, um, and, and let's not confuse it. This We're not talking about the integrand as this curve, but this is um, whatever has been achieved after the integration. Since uh, this minus this is going to be zero, this minus this is zero, all this is going to be uh, zero. This here is zero, right? And our focus now will be here, here, here. And also these, since these are constants, these are going to be zero, zero, and zero, right? So essentially uh, what happens now, we have zero. And then since uh, at pi over negative pi over two, we have negative pi over two. And then at uh, three pi over two negative, we have positive pi over two. So negative pi over two minus negative pi over two, actually for the green one. The same thing happens here from negative pi over two to pi over two. Um, at negative pi over two, at, ne at pi over two, sorry, we have negative pi over two. At negative pi over two, we have positive pi over two. So we have minus pi over two minus pi over two. And then here as well at pi over two, uh, at three pi over two, we have negative pi over two. And at pi over two, we have positive pi over two. So negative pi over two minus minus pi over two, uh, mi sorry, minus pi over two is what we get. And then um, since the stepping disappears above, uh, this entire thing becomes zero. So we have the result here being negative pi, negative pi, negative pi. And so we have negative pi minus pi minus pi as our answer, which is three pi. Um, and that is our answer. Um, thank you very much for those who have paid attention uh, or who have followed along. If you have any question, you have one further explanation, please uh, don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section. But it has been an absolute pleasure hanging out with you this time around. Until next time, I'll tell you a lot of questions.